Hi, I'm Eric Johnson here today at Owen Graduate School of Management at Vanderbilt University. And today we have the great pleasure of hosting Lieutenant General Ronald Bailey of the U.S. Marine Corps. General Bailey's been in the Marines now for nearly 40 years, which is a, a good long run. And I'm kind of curious uh, about your experience, but first of all, just welcome. It's just well, so great to have you Thank you very here. much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how things have changed in, in 40 years of, uh, of service. Well, in 40 years, quite a lot has changed. I mean, when you think about uh, things from a technology standpoint, that has made a big difference. The size of of our radios, then computers come into the military, our ability to be able to respond to different requirements or requests or identify uh, different uh, combatants and belligerents, all of that has uh, just changed. But the one thing that has significantly changed is information operations and cyber. That is the one thing that I've seen that has just really made a change to not only the way, the way we think, but to the battlefield and what the future battlefield may uh, look like. How has that changed the way you lead? Uh, leadership, uh, one thing about the Marine Corps, we keep our uniforms the same and uh, our leadership foundation stays pretty, pretty solid. We talk about something that uh, we call it, a, we have acronyms. We, we have these 14 leadership traits and principles that we anchor everything on and that has been a success story for us over time. The other thing that has been significant for us is that we make sure that everybody understands the legacy of the Marine Corps, the historical aspect of the Marine Corps, uh, build up the core values in each and every Marine that joins our Corps. And so that in itself has helped us hold the line in terms of maintaining our edge. And when I say maintaining our edge, we really think that we're the 911 force uh, for the nation to be ready to respond at a moment's notice for anything that comes up or any contingency. Well, you know, we're here at a business school and a lot of the firms that recruit our students uh, say that millennials think a little differently and mm -hmm. that they're having to make some adjustments uh, for the way uh, millennials work in the workplace. And I'm curious how you see that in the Marines and, and what adjustments you've had to make. Well, I would have to agree with them that they do think a little differently and I think for the better and that's a, that's a good thing. And so for me and for the Marine Corps, I think the value of it is that when you take all of that experience and expertise, the ideas and you mix it all together, then you come up with the recipe for success. So that in, in itself has helped. I, I put together something I call leadership lessons from the battlefield to the bases and to the boardroom and basically have taken a, over a long period of time and just looked at what I've seen work and what has not worked and then put it all together to share some leadership, uh, some experience and expertise uh, with those as they come up. So for us, uh, what I call the old guard, the old school, <laughs> it's engaged leadership. And even when you talk to those who've come before us, they talk about getting out and getting around. So you put different names on it, but uh, the end state is the same. Get to know your people, understand your people, take care of your people, create an opportunity for them to move forward, create an opportunity for them to improve themselves. Yeah, always important, but maybe more important today now? Uh, I think it's more important today because of the, what I would call the mixture of talent that comes in and that talent pool. And uh, we've learned a lot uh, from the outside. And when I say from the outside, uh, Amazon, Google, we take the opportunity to establish uh, fellowships. We send some of our young Marines out and some old Marines go out also to, to observe. So it's top down, bottom up, and uh, you get the best of both worlds when in fact you're looking at it from a very broad perspective and taking a comprehensive look at what we're doing. A key to it though is being able to adapt. The Marine Corps has always been able to adapt either from amphibious operations or first ones to use the helos in the combat environment, the way we've used the, all of those different platforms. And then most recently, we've revolutionized how we move around with the Osprey. So all of those things are ideas that have come from uh, both the top and the bottom, but most importantly, listening to the Marines as they come up with ideas to help us deal with the challenges that we see we're gonna have in a future environment. Yeah, so you mentioned Amazon there. What, mm -hmm. what are some things the private sector could learn from the Marines and, and maybe things you're learning from the private sector? Well, I think Amazon's taking the lead mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when uh, they started talking about how they were going to deliver their, their uh, material, their books, uh, by using drones to deliver. We are doing the same thing in terms of working with drones to do that aspect of it. But we look at everything from how they handle the logistics to how they handle uh, technology and we, we go back and forth and, and just how they deal with uh, the people. And so we're looking at something called third offset strategy. 
And this third offset strategy is that we're looking out in the civilian community, we're looking all around, and we're putting it together so that we can look forward maybe for 10 years, and we're calling it the 2025, to mm -hmm. be able to look out in the future and make a prediction of, we think that the environment will be like this. One thing we do know about the environment, it's gonna be uncertain, it's gonna be <laughs> fluid, and it's gonna be a lot of friction, and it'll be disorder. That's we do know. And so we've <laughs> got to figure out how to do that. is change. That's right? exactly it. <laughs> well, thinking about that and over your career, share a leadership lesson that you wished you had learned maybe earlier in your career um, or something a young, a young uh, okay. person should learn about leadership. I'm not, I don't know if it's something I wish I would have learned, but I've uh, experienced some things or seen some things that happen that I think become some foundations. It's about character. And I think uh, when we start talking about character, there are a couple of things that come to mind. Uh, having the courage, the courage to do the right thing, say the right thing, and also step out and do what you feel that needs to happen. Then the one that I call the most important is integrity. I mean, integrity, you know, about yourself and about the organization and ensuring that you don't compromise what you believe those values. We talk about those core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Uh, we think that uh, when you are uh, individual or marine of integrity, uh, that you'll do the right thing, you'll make the right decision because you look at it from a perspective of, it's not about you, it's about the organization and it's about service. And so you have to look out. Uh, the other thing that I think that I gained a, a real good appreciation for was taking care of people. I was a young second lieutenant when I came in and I had about 48 uh, Marines and coming straight out of uh, college at the age of 21, all of a sudden you're responsible for their pay, for their food, for everything administratively and ensuring that they're taken care of. And at the time I was in Okinawa, Japan, so wow. in a foreign land. And so I learned a whole lot in terms of those lessons of taking care of people. That's great. Well, General Bailey, thanks so much for spending the day with us at Vanderbilt. It's been a pleasure. It, it'll be a pleasure. And I look forward to sharing some insight uh, in terms of experience and expertise with the students.